steam locomotives in miniature at the steam workshop. This is a few small jobs left to do and the LNER V1 is ready to steam again. You don't realise when you rebuild these locomotives how many small jobs do need doing. I'll start with this job. I went up to Blackgates and bought a couple of these. These are 5 sixteenths of an inch by 32 threads per inch blowdown valves. And there's one each side of the boiler to allow you to blow down the boiler after a run. This is a steel boiler so it will need blowing down to get rid of all the water after a run. The usual principle is, once you've dropped the fire, let the pressure fall to about £50 per square inch and then open the blowdown valves. All the water is blown out of the boiler by steam pressure and the residual heat in the boiler evaporates the rest, so you end up with a boiler that is internally very dry. When using steel boilers of any type, it's a good idea to add a chemical known as DM or water treatment, and this helps slow down the rusting process. I've turned the engine round, and as you notice, it is leaning on some pillows. And using pillows is a great idea if you want to put the locomotive on its side. It will save bending parts of the external superstructure and marking the paintwork. What I'm doing at the moment is cleaning the other side of the engine in the area where I'm going to fit the other blowdown valve. But there was a problem. I had to make an adapter to fit this 5 16 by 32 threads per inch blowdown valve to fit the hole in the side of the boiler which had to be enlarged to 3 8 by 32 threads per inch owing to some corrosion on the original threads. Look what's on the bench next to me. I can't get away from them. This is a 14XX. But this is not the same as the 14XX I've been working on recently. This was produced as a kit in the UK a few years ago. And this one, thanks to the shipping company, is almost back into kit form. It was packaged in a crate very securely, but unfortunately, someone at the shipping company dropped the crate on the floor, and this is what happened to the engine. It's very badly mangled in certain places. The buffer beam was very badly twisted, and the part you can see there is the spectacle plate. Occasionally some young people work at the steam workshop just for a short while, and this engine is being dismantled by a young man called Darren. The design of this is very different to the Chinese one that I've been working on. This is the buffer beam since the paint's been removed and it's been straightened. First of all, it was heated to dull red heat. It burnt off all of the epoxy resin, which on these models is used to hold the rivets in place. In this clip, the buffer beam has got five rivets left to pull out and it's been cleaned in the bead blasting machine. There's quite a lot of work yet to do on this engine to make it run again. Now it's back to the V1. This was a really difficult job. The original pipe that went from the turret down to the injector was in the way of the coupling rod, or the other way around. Every time the wheel revolved, the coupling rod hit the pipe. I made a complete new pipe to go from the injector to the turret and bent it so that it wasn't in the way of the coupling rod. Moving to the front of the engine, namely the smoke box, I had to drill out the broken handrail stanchion, re-tap the thread so I could screw in a new handrail stanchion, and this then allowed me to refit the original handrail. Moving outside now, there's a steam test about to take place. This is a really nice little engine. It's very, very heavy because the water tank is full of lead, and by very, very heavy, I mean incredibly so. And because it's an 040 wheel arrangement, its tractive effort should be far in excess of what you would expect from such a small engine. This engine has recently had the gauge glass at the right hand side replaced, so in this clip I'm just tightening the nut to make it seal properly. It's most important when tightening water gauge nuts to not tighten them too much. Over tighten them and the glass will crack. The glass needs to be able to move around a little bit as the boiler expands and contracts. Drain cocks open. The person operating this engine is not very experienced. His name's Darren and he's working on the 14XX inside the workshop. It does take a bit of practice to successfully operate a miniature steam locomotive. I'll stop talking so you can listen to the soundtrack. In a moment you will see a hand appear under the engine, there it is, this is Simon's hand manually operating the brakes to make sure that the shoes engage with the wheels. And the reason for Simon having to do this is the rod that connects the brakes to the main reversing shaft is not connected. 
I really would not recommend doing this unless you really know what you're doing. It's definitely a full afternoon in A&E if you get your hands caught in the motion on an engine like this. This is definitely not a mammod. That's about it for the V1. I need to just straighten up the blower pipe slightly, but everything else is okay. And I might even straighten the handrail on the bunker just to appease the viewer who took the time to write in and tell me that it was bent. Never mind, life is a bitch and then you die. But in this clip, I've straightened it. Look, can you see? It's very straight now. It's near enough for rock and roll anyway. It's worth remembering that on the full-size locomotives, things were often bent. The handrails and bits and pieces of pipe were never perfectly straight. We live in an imperfect world. If you watch this series from the beginning, you'll see how bad the engine was before I started working on it. I'd like to thank Dave at the Steam Workshop for doing the painting, and the next part of the job is the steam test. But that's it for this episode, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.